Okay, uh, my name is Mike Griffin. Uh, I've been a boat builder for most of my life, fabricator, marine surveyor for about 15 years. Um, I'm here to discuss a ground fault sensing module that I custom build myself. Basically what it does is it detects AC leakage in vessels. Um, it kind of hit me, I went through my uh, technical certifications with David Rifkin, he was my teacher at one of uh, his uh, uh, classes that he has and on my way home the thing just struck me. I said, you know man, maybe I could build something at home um, that could help me detect, you know, straight current in boats. So basically it says that right there, start out as a performance boat rigger, Florida. And so now what I do is I'm not just a surveyor, I build these, I sell them, and I build a permanent uh, pedestal that is devoted to a dock at any marina that has four receptacles with three different, you've got 250, 250 connections, one 5125 connection and one 30 amp connection. It's devoted to a fuel dock or any specific dock in your marina for boats to approach, you know, come into your marina and they get tested before they're allowed to come in and, and dock. Um, I'll show you pictures of that in a second. Um, I also have developed marina survey software, basically on a tablet. What we do now is we walk the docks, we clamp meter all the cords, we inspect the pedestals, and the um, tablet, what it does is it gives you the opportunity to mark everything good, bad, excellent, clamp meter readings, and then you've got your um, areas where you can punch in, replace your cord, uh, install a coupler, you know, whatever I find wrong with the owner shore power cord, because maybe why C303, even though it talks about, you know, about the boat yard mostly, um, it also does mention that uh, portable cords should be inspected as well. So the portable cords are basically owned by the boat owner, but we take it upon ourselves to inspect their cords because it's part of 303. Um, so we clamp meter all the cords, we document everything. It also has a, an area on the tablet where you can uh, punch in and, and put in your comments. You know, I've been here three times, spoke with the guy, tagged this boat. Then the next box is where you can uh, take a picture of whatever you find that's wrong, you know, of severed connection, something that looks like it's gonna catch on fire. Um, and then the, lastly, at the bottom box, it's for the marina repair, meaning anything I find wrong with the pedestals or connections or lights, anything I, you know, that, that has anything to do with the marina, we record as well. And at the end of the day, what the software does is it divides everything. It prints out a, a hot boat list, any boat that we find that's hot. It uh, prints out a list for the repairs for the marina. Um, and it also prints out a list of all the boats that have been tagged. So all this stuff basically kind of goes up into the cloud down onto my website, uh, West Trek, which is who I work for directly. I survey all four of their marinas in the state of Georgia. So it's roughly 2,480 slips that I survey. I do about 400 a day. <clears throat> you know, I clam meter probably around 6,000 shore power cords in, in about a week's time. Um, documenting everything that, you know, that I come across. Um, so there you go. It's a picture of one of West Trek's marinas, collectively 2,480 slips. Um, I've been doing it for them for about four years now. It's been working out real well. Um, and I'll get into there's That's like the very first, you can see all that, right? Um, that's part of the software program. It's kind of lengthy. There's like three parts to it. So right at the top, it's date, time, dock, slip, boat name. Uh, condition of your cord, we've either got one, two, three, or four cords because we have as many as four in the big houseboats. Um, next, um, like I say, it's designed to separate the marina repair list, the hot boat list, vessels that have been tagged list, prints out your results for your dock master or marina manager. Works out really well, they love it. Um, these are the other two forms, if you look at them closely, if you can. The top left is are the uh, shore power cord, clamp meter readings, you know, whether it's, you know, 30 milliamps or it's 27 amps, it doesn't matter. We record every clamp meter reading that we have. And then you've got your little check boxes down here, replace your cord, replace this, bing, bang, whatever. And then, and then at the bottom, my mark slip, slip has been tagged. 
Um, so that way it, it, it falls into that list that gets printed out for the marina. The top box is for comments. The second one down is for photos. The, the next one down is for the marina maintenance list, like I mentioned earlier. So it works out really good. It's, it's just uh, something I've been working on for a long time and we've been utilizing um, for the last two years. This is kind of what I came up with, these tags. That's the front side. I put them right you know, in their face. I, I mean, literally, if I think the connection on the side of the boat is where you enter your boat, I will put that tag right there where you got it almost, you got to walk into it. Um, this is the back side where it explains, you know, basically what we're doing about, you know, NFPA 303. Uh, basically trying to protect the marinas as well. You know, we're not there. I'm not there to preach, you know, we're trying to prevent electric shock drowning. There's just too much liability involved in that. I think we all agree. Um, but what we can do is, you know, as for the marina, we can protect ourselves. In the event that something does happen, we can actually... If we go to court, we can mention, say, listen, we've done everything we can. You know, we, we walk the docks, we plant near the courts, we document everything, we tag the boats, we contact the owners. Uh, we, we're doing everything that we can possibly um, to try to prevent electric shock drowning in the marines. So, um, moving on here, you know, again, explaining 303, if you, if you read on down, it goes, you know, an inspection of all electrical wire and ground connections, conduit hangers, supports, connections, outlets, appliances, devices, and here's my part, and portable cables installed or used in a marina is the most important part of the inspection because that's normally the most faults that we find. People installing their cords without seal rings on them, people running their cords onto the dock with, you know, loose connections, uh, allowing them to, to lay in the water all the time. So what I do is I wear gloves up to here. They're 600 volt, 50 amp proof, you know, gloves. And what I do is if I can pull your cord out of the water and secure it somehow without disconnecting it or rerouting it, I will. If I think I've got to turn a breaker off to disconnect it, I won't touch it, I just won't. I'll tag the boat, call the owner and say, hey man, your cord has got to be taken out of the water. You've got to find a way to secure it correctly. Um, you know, we um, do them annually, basically, because that's exactly what ABYC wants, right? ABYC is asking us to annually um, inspect the uh, marinas, and so is NFPA. Um, what would be a real good thing is to do it biannually, you know, like before the season starts and when the season ends. Um, for the most part, the marinas will pay me to do them annually. I got a couple small marinas that have me do them biannually. Um, it's all if they're into it or if they're not into it. Like it, you got to sell them in a way. You got to get them to understand that you need to protect yourself in the event that something happens. And once you get them to that point, you know, normally you score the work. And, and so far, I've been pretty, pretty uh, lucky at doing that. Um, because now, not only do I have West Trek, but I also have um, Suntex Marinas. Um, I'm working on Aqualand again, you know, which is uh, Safe Harbor Marinas, and I think they just did a big juncture. I think they have like 30 some odd marinas across the country now, and they want me to fly to Dallas, Texas at just some seminar at the end of February to promote to do exactly what I'm doing today. Um, not that I'm really interested in flying around the country surveying marinas. I'd rather stay in the state of Georgia and just, you know, do what I'm doing. Um, next. You know, I went to the uh, boat show. I've got several Georgia Marine owners who say that they want their marina surveyed annually before the spring. Some of them, again, you know, want me to do them biannually, marina's inspections. I normally do them in the fall before the cor cords are too difficult to move. Once they get cold, you can't do anything with them. Um, hot boats are found every day. When I call hot boats, I, I don't mean 30 million. I'm talking one amp and above. I get them all day long. Um, so, Let's get to this, right? The correct way to clamp meter a cord to find, or call it a shore power cord, to find a true reading is to go after the hot neutrals only, less the ground. So if you would pass this around, I put the cable off down there because it's really important. It holds the connection securely, takes the weight off the unit, keeps it from falling in the water, and hopefully no one will steal it. So what it does is, you want to pass that around 
Right now, I've got this thing plugged into a 15 amp connection. Normally, I'd be hooked up to a 30 or 50, right? But I just adapted. That's all I need. And then I need the power. I went to North Shore Safety and I said, listen, you have this thing called an LC device. We're putting the digital circuit in the road. I think it's a great idea, but I can tell you that I can't go around Georgia turning off boats. This LC device is going to turn boats off when they're putting space heaters on or whatever may happen. And you're going to have freeze damage. You're going to have, you know, um, battery chargers, you know, turning off. And maybe the guy's got a constant leak and his pumps are running continuously. And his batteries are going to go dead. And the boat's going to sink at the dock. I mean, just it just never ends, right? So I said, if we could take this LC device and we could just simply adapt it to an audio and a visual alarm system, that would be ideal for a marine surveyor like myself. Like, literally, I could walk up to a boat, install this thing, I could hit the test. First of all, I, what I do is I test the pedestal first. I have an adapter and I always use my true test um, ideal analog. This is the best tool. I use it every day for testing generators and outlets for cycles, voltage, polarity, etc. So the first thing I do is I use adapters and I test the pedestal. I go, look, Mr. Boat Owner, whatever your gripe is, say, you know, telling the office if you had a high electric bill or shorts on boat, you know, something's going on with your boat. I proved to them that the receptacle and the, the pedestal is in good serviceable condition by literally testing it in front of me. Once I get past that and I feel safe about hooking my sensor up to the pedestal, I connect it, I turn the main breaker on. The first thing I do is I look and I look for my power button. I know I've got power. I hit the test button. The test button activates the audio and the visual alarm. So right there, I know that this thing is ready to go. So then I reset it, it turns it off. Now I connect to the boat, I turn on the main, nothing yet. I start hitting you know, breakers one at a time, process of elimination. What I did was I took a small rheostat and I create a ground fault by literally driving, you know, the hot into the ground. That's what I'm doing with this little box right here. So I'm going to turn this knob and it's going to activate the sensor when it is over 30 milliamps, which is the requirements of the American Boat and Yacht Council and National Fire Protection Agency. 30 milliamps is the threshold that is considered that that's enough electricity in the water to give you a jolt, but not enough to kill you. Right? That's what that's where that number comes from. So now I take my trusty clamp meter. Everybody's got their own idea about what clamp meter to use. I mean, I've gone from Home Depot to Hayoki to Yoki Gowers. Um, for whatever reason, this Hayoki clamp meter it seems to have a 60 milliamp shelf. Like literally, I'll stare at this thing, it'll go from 80 to 70 to 60, and then it disappears. So this is real good for, for me to walk docks all day long. And clamp me a cord is looking for hot boats, right? Because it's relatively cheaper, it's, it's fast, it's quick, it's light. But if I want to get a, a good low reading, you know, below 30 milliamps, this Yoki Gawa works down to one million. So that's why I bought this high dollar clamp me to myself. So I power it up, I put it on milliamps. I don't know right now if this guy's boat, let's just say I'm hooked up to a boat, this guy operates up. I don't know if he's got 27 amp straight current or if he's got 270 milliamp straight current, right? Until I clamp meter the hot and neutral zone. Now I know you can't see that from here, but the reading that I have right now is 0 0.130. So I have 130 milliamps being created by this real stat right now. And then far, further I turn it, the higher the, the number gets. So now what I do is I clamp meter over the ground wire. Now, they better try to neutral each other out, meaning that if the ground wire is good and it's handling all of the straight current, the reading of my clamp meter should be exactly the same, if not close, because we've got a lot of residual in the ground system, of, you know, daisy chain system of the docks, right? Got a lot of garbage being dumped into the ground wire of any, of any dock, mostly older docks as well and, and older boats. So now I'm looking at the meter and it says exactly one, 0 0.130. So now I know that Mr. Boat Owner, yeah, you've got straight current, you've got 130 milliamps worth. And I know for a fact that your ground wire is good because I've got 130 milliamps in your ground wire. So I know that the boat is safe in a way. 
to at least start, you know, to keep turning and operating other components and appliances and, and activating breakers, right? I put a button on this thing because what I do is I strap it to your boat. Once I test your boat, once I test your boat, so I just do this, I'll shut this off and then I'll reset it. Now it's back to where it needs to be, right? When I test your boat and I think your boat is clean, I say to, I say to these guys, I go, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to hook this up to your boat over the weekend while you're on board with your family and you're plugging in things you don't normally plug in or you're bringing things in from home or you're, you know, maybe pulling a, 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 a two-wire space heater or whatever and plugging it in, it's going to cause a neutral ground connection, whatever it may be, right? So what I do is I install I rent them now. I have rentals actually that are, I make them a little bit cheaper than this, which I'll show you in a second. This was a boat that took me forever to figure out. That, that, those white wires with tape on them, literally they didn't tape the top of the bolt. The bolt was touching the frame of the houseboat. It took me three days to find this neutral ground problem. <laughs> Here's basic, right? I gotta love this. This is a, a houseboat built from Kentucky, and you can see exactly what, what's going on. You've got this big monster green wire that's tied directly into the bus bar with all your mutuals connected, right? So there you go. Oh, I call these guys. I go, you're really making me upset. I, you know, I'm about to get my truck and drive up there. <laughs> Drive me crazy. So, and then what I also found out is that when I clam you to your cord, and you start turning more things on and the reading just keeps getting higher and higher and higher, that automatically tells me you have a neutral ground connection. That's just what it means. So I'm clamping me in your cord. I keep telling you, all right, turn another thing on, turn something else on. Now every time you turn something on and the reading gets higher, I go, just stop. We have a neutral ground connection somewhere. We have to figure it out before we can go any further. That's gotta be handled. So once we get the boat fixed and we think that it's good, what I do is I install it and I leave it there for the weekend. And literally the reason why I put this button on there is because you wake up in the morning, you get your coffee, the alarm is going off, whatever it is was intermittent, it turned on in the middle of the night. You go to reset it, right? Let's say it's doing this. And you go to reset it and the noise doesn't go away. Well, that means whatever the problem is, is still existing, right? And you can't get rid of the noise because the thing is strapped to the pedestal, it's connected, you don't want it. So you just do this. I just did that for the board, just so they don't upset their, their neighbors. Basically is why that button is there. And sometimes I'm tired of hearing it when I'm working on the boat. So moving on. Yeah, and not only do we have neutral ground connections that are tied in at these main panels, but these guys are going to Best Buy, service merchandise, they're buying microwaves and flat screen TVs and stoves. And, and at the appliance end, the manufacturer is physically making a neutral ground connection. I've gotten to the point where uh, on a houseboat one time, I had to tear the entire frame, bifold doors, everything to get a stackable washer and dryer out of the hole you know, to get to the back of the unit, to find, to pull the back panel, to find the neutral ground connection. I cut the neutral connection, I terminate it so it doesn't touch anything. And then I run a separate ground, you know, through the wall, down through the bulkheads, whatever, and run an independent ground to that unit. So now we've got independent, hot, neutral, and ground. So no longer any neutral ground connections. So appliances are, are the other half of the neutral ground connection problem. So here's a, an idea, gotta love this boat, right? Prime time, what a gem this boat is. Um, the hippie chick, she's smoking crack on board the boat, I think. And I walked up, this is, uh, this is Aqualam Marina. So I climbed near one court, you can't see those readings, but it's it says 16.10 amps, right? It's a hot boat. I clamp me to the other cord, same reading, 16.10 amps. I know the neutrals are connected on board this boat, right? That's just what that means. 
if you get the same reading in both coils. So then I soon realized that I didn't need to install two sensors on a dual shore power system boat. I only had to put one sensor on it because one sensor picks up on both ends. Here's a good one, 27.15, right? 27 amps straight current. This is a houseboat. This is a monster too. I think this thing had 450 amp connections on it. So again, I clamp meter it. I find this one reading, and if you look at this picture real close, and then look at the second one, I'm on another cord. I'm on the second cord, right? So there's that cord. See where the, the distance between the meter and the garden hose. And then there's that cord, right? Two different cords. Again, I know for a fact that the neutrals are tied together on board the boat. So this boat may have neutral ground connections, uh, neutral connections, you know, it could be all, ab all the above. Appliances with neutral ground connections, it could be everything. 116 volts in the water. I just went to Home Depot one day and I bought one of those telescope and paint roller things made out of fiberglass. I put a piece of metal at one end, ran a wire up the center of it, put a meter on one end, tapped into the ground system of the dock, put this in the water and found 116 volts in the water. And what happens is with this tool that I make, I'm walking alongside the boat, like I get nothing, and then all of a sudden it, the reading gets higher and higher and higher, and then all of a sudden it gets lower and lower and lower. And then I'll go this way and get higher. I get to the point where I get the highest reading. I know for a fact that there's a cable, because in you know, Lake Lanier, but they, they don't have timers. They run cables to concrete blocks. They're you know, 50, 60, 75 feet in the water. So what's going on is, is that the electricity, the boat, you know, depending on which way the wind is blowing that day, the boat is pushed to the port side and it's this far away from a cable that's tied into the dock frame, which is the ground system. So it's just the path of least resistance that I found with this tool that I put in the water of where this electricity is being emitted into, you know, to water and trying to return to the ground to its power source, which is the transformer up in the parking lot, right? That's what, just what it's trying to do. Uh, I get these all day long, you know, these uh, hot water heaters, when they, what happens with these things are, um, they buy hot household hot water heaters that are steel reservoir, sometimes they cover them with fiberglass, and the element that screws through the side of it um, starts to leak, gets rusted, and then what it does is it saturates the insulation, and the insulation is always laying directly on top of the circuit board that controls it. So once that insulation gets moist and it's laying on top of the circuit board the circuit board goes ballistic and it will just start driving 10 amps worth of straight current into the ground side and hopefully your ground is good uh, the pedestal that's basically what i what i did was when i built this sensor it's built specifically because every all the west track marinas have these pilot house eaten pilot house pedestals so if you look at this close, you'll see that it lands directly on the base, you know, the, the length of the cord, where it lands, that cable that goes through the, the I call it the wrist pin, um, is specifically in the right place for it to be drawn tight. So literally you install the sensor and basically you twist the sensor to where you know, your connection is preloaded, right? It's, it's connected, but now it's preloaded because you don't have the opportunity of a seal ring ever at the connection end, right? I've never seen a pedestal that has a threaded connection at the pedestal end. So what the cable does is it holds it in place, it preloads the connection, it takes the weight off the connection, keeps it from falling in the water, and hopefully it'll keep somebody from stealing it. So that cable does about four different things. Um, you know, again, to attain a true uh, clamp breeding, you got to separate your hot neutrals from your ground. It's just the only way you can do it. Um, this is a blue seas thing that I, I, I found online that I think is, is a perfect depiction of, you know, proper clamp metering and how an LC device uh, works by separating the ground from the hot neutrals. I put that in your file. This is uh, basically an illustration of ABYC's regulations, you know, and um, E11, et cetera, um, of how a boat should be uh, wired and LC device installed, and et cetera. I found this article 
online I thought was pretty interesting. I love the, I love this part right here where it says GC control. And GC means garbage current. I love that term. You know, the current that's in the ground wire is garbage. It could be from your it could be DC current from your neighbor's bills pump. It could be AC current from your neighbor's appliance. It could be your DC or AC current. That's, it could be anything, right? It's all daisy chain. It's all connected. I call it garbage current. So I, I put that literature in there for you guys to read. Uh, it keeps going. There's another page where it talks about the bonding system, how you know your ground system for your DC through your bonding uh, that's attached to your AC ground wire as well. Um, how they all are how how they are all attached and and how they affect things. And the one thing that I find that's very curious to me is the fact that when you dump 120 volts into a ground wire, which is tied into your bonding that ends up in your DC ground wire, it doesn't affect anything in your DC. Your engine still starts, your gauges still read, your lights still light, but yet you've got all this voltage, AC voltage in your DC side. It just doesn't recognize it. Make sense? Break time. That was my sister. That she, she figured I was going to talk your head off and everybody was going to want to take a break. Um, <laughs> but we're going to keep going. So, um, straight current sensor is a mobile device installed between the dock power pedestal and the vessel shore power core, custom built to connect all three shore power connections. So I build, you know, all, you know, actually four of them. I've got the 3125, the 5125, the 5125 slash 250, and the 5250. So I can build all four sensors that connect to any boat, mainly cruisers, you know, not big military. Um, you know, in, the now, in all cases, you're just bringing out the neutral and ground. In all cases, you're, you're bringing the neutral and ground external to your. Uh, yeah, the hot, it's the hot neutral are exposed separate on the ground. to a boat and the first thing that I noticed was nuisance tripping like uh, an older air conditioner will go to power up and the thing will go off. Um, I didn't like the fact that it turned the boat off. That was number two. Um, every time I survey a boat I do a radio check right so always the VHF antennas are laying back because they're an undercover slip so everybody puts their antennas back well, I went up to the bridge to do a radio check, not that anybody ever calls you back at Lake Lanier. Um, all of a sudden, it set the alarm off. Beep, beep, beep. What the heck? Well, come to find out, their LC device had an RF problem, radio frequency problem. When you got close enough to it with a handheld VHF radio, it set it off. So I jumped in a plane, I flew up there, and I said, this is what I want. I want to change the circuitry in this thing where it, it activates an audio and a visual alarm only. I need a circuit board and an audio to go with it, which I have, and I actually pot the circuit board myself. Um, I also want to uh, pot the winding, the inductive pickup winding inside of the now ground fault sensing module to get rid of the RF problem. Um, and I also want you guys to delay the trip time. I want it to give it an, you know, another millisecond for all the appliances to power up to get rid of this nuisance trip because every time I get on an older steel houseboat or whatever, um, and by the way, you can't be prejudiced. I can get on a 1972 ho uh, steel houseboat, the boat could be wired correctly, everything would be super clean. I could get on a, you know, a, a year 2000, whatever, and the boat just be completely stupidly wired and everything wrong. So. The one thing I did learn was you can't walk around pointing fingers at boats going, you know, that's a piece of junk, and, but it could be, the boat could be actually wired correctly and, and does the right thing. <coughs> Any questions so far? Okay, so 
you know, it's designed to help you pinpoint problems with, you know, older vessels, you know, that may have faulty equipment, renovated vessels with new wiring and appliances, you know, you're going to Home Depot and buying a new washer dryer. Um, vessels with an extremely high electric bill, I get that all the time from the ship stores. They call me up, we got another boat owner that saying their electric bill is, you know, $30 more than normal. Can you please go down there with your sensor and check it? And normally I'll find some kind of a short. Uh, episodes of electric shock, you know, we've got guys swimming in marina and for what, you know, they go check their propeller, right? First thing they do is, you know, grab their prop and get nailed. Um, episodes of tingling in the water when swimming, you know, near a boat or just a couple of things that, you know, that, that give you a good reason to know that there's something going on. Uh, most important, it is a tool that helps the marina personnel, marina surveyors, electricians, and boat owners troubleshoot the source of ultimate current, electrical leakage in any vessel without shutting the power off to the vessel, meaning that if you, if you, if you hook that LC device up to it, it shuts the boat off, what do you do now? You can't turn in, the boat is dead, right? This is my personal arsenal of straight current sensors. Like literally, you, you look at them, you'll see the ones, these are the cheaper ones that I make. I go to Home Depot and I buy, that's the PVC pipe that, you know, I bought the earlier uh, style LC devices that had RF problems and nuisance tripping, whatever, but I will install that on a boat that I think is just super clean. Like I'll test it with my big equipment, I'll go through the boat several times, and I'll say, listen, Mr. Boater, why don't we leave this, these sensors hooked up to your boat over the weekend uh, for 50 bucks? You know, if, you, if it goes off, you can reset it, you can disconnect it, whatever you want to do. And sometimes I'll, you know, I'll, I'll come back on a Monday, they'll leave me a check and a piece of paper and says, the thing went off when I turned this breaker on. So now I go, okay, I call Tim McNeil, the, the you know, ABYC electrical. Um, electrician in the area and I'll say listen you know doc a slip 21 keys are on board the guy saying that you know when he hits this breaker um, and this thing cycles several times it activates the sensor go take a look at it so I've got a handful of rentals I've got you know the ones that I use every single day when I survey boats um, so that's those are all the sensors that I have everything from 30 up to 50, 125 to 50, 125, 250, and the 50, 250. So I got two or three centers of every connection there is. And I use them every day on every boat that I survey. Sometimes, you know, sea rays are the best boats, uh, you know, that are wired correctly. See, I, I, I survey a lot of sea ray boats and I hardly ever find a problem. It's got to be the one boat that I can pretty much walk up to and say, I'm, I don't think I'm going to find any problems with. All right, so the sensor is held by a cable. Cable keeps the connection preloaded, takes the weight off of it, prevents the sensor from falling into the water or possibly being stolen. Um, this is when I learned that I didn't have to, th these were two rentals, you know, that I told this guy, I said, hey, let's put some rentals on there for the weekend. Well, this is when I found that was starting toying around and I was realizing that when I got the same reading in both cords, I didn't have to rent the guy two sensors. All I had to do was install one. So instead of charging him a hundred bucks for the weekend, I only charged him 50. Um, there's another rental. This was for uh, Singleton Marine Group, by the way, which is one of the largest yacht dealerships in the East Coast anyway. Um, they pay me to do a lot of their um, uh, trade-ins and boats that they, you know, are, are looking to buy. So I test all of their boats for straight current, including, you know, diagnostics with computers for fuel injections and generators and the rest of it. So Singleton Marine Group is one of my biggest customers, just like uh, like Holiday Marine. Earlier you were saying that you had reconfigured the DLC box to become a Yes. Well, if the industry is selling these DLC devices, which is supposed to be picking up on the straight current, are they selling your modified device or are they selling the device that you bought before the modified device? I was told, somebody told me that you could find my device that, that, that I had in bait and build online. Is that what you're looking at? I'm looking at it right now. So they're selling my mod the module. 
But, but it's not called an LC, it's called a ground fault sensing monitor. Well, I've searched it out. There is an LC specific LC sensing monitor. Well, if it's an LC, that's exactly their product. Yes, that's not that's not what I had I had them change. Actually, somebody answered to that is under the the new NEC, which is what you're talking about, requires the LC device in the past yeah. at the marina. Yeah, which you're never going to do. Which, but, but some of them are is the problem. And I'm a member of AGLCA, and I get a lot of stuff in the chat room where people are doing the inland waters, and they go into these marinas, and the marina has thought, all right, we're going to comply with the new standards, so they slap a bunch of LC devices in the pedestals. Well, the problem is, just like you said, some guy in some old houseboat comes in, or some old base maker that's you know, got a residential panel, and he plugs in and goes into town and comes back and everything in the fridge is now broken. Exactly right. Because he doesn't realize that he's had this minor leak yep. for decades. And <clears throat> in, you know, in a regular uh, marina pedestal, I, you're never going to trip the breaker. I, I have pictures. I, I, I literally. I literally got my hands on a couple of those pedestals. Actually, they bought, they purchased the entire pedestals with the LC devices installed in them already. Yeah. It's called Intelligence Something or Other Company. I'm going to show you that in a second. We'll get into that because that's a very good point. And they actually have dip switches on them. You can change it from 5 milliamp to 25 milliamp. So what I did for Westrick was they, they went out and they bought six pedestals for each marina to try to comply to you know, ABYC, NEC, everything, just to show their incentive, to, to see how it would work. Well, guess what? Exactly what happened. They started plugging boats in, they got shut off, they called me, I walked up to them and I said, well, let's start with RF, just joking around. The guy was standing next to me with a radio in his hand. I walked right up to the pedestal, I went, click, boom, shut the boat off. Went, okay, that's number one, we got an RF problem. Now let's pull the lid off, right? And now, now let's open up the box. They were all set at five million. So I hit all the dip switches and changed them to 25 because it's not over 30. 30 is, is NEC and ABYC, right? I'll show you what I did. I actually took RF bags, if you know what that is, they're like lead line Ziploc bags. And I literally took those black boxes after I changed the dip switch, the setting on them, I put them in those bags and I threw them back inside the pedestal and I got rid of the RF problem and some of the nuisance trip. But yet, if your boat has anything over 25 milliamps, it's still going to turn the boat off. And get ready for this. It turns off both connections. There's two boxes for four connections. So one box controls two 30 amps. So if your air conditioner creates a problem, it shuts off both. Now your refrigerator, everything else gets turned off. And I, I sat down with Westrek and I showed him everything. I have pictures. I'll show them to you. Yeah, it's, it's pissing off. Oh boy, it's causing. Uh, like, uh, I'm, no, I'm talking guys walking in the door like irate, like ready to. Well, it's, they're, they're designed to protect lives. It's in the event you know, little Johnny. It's not even if Johnny goes swimming in the water. If little Johnny falls in the water, what we call it. All right, so here's another rental. This was Singleton Marine Group. I do a lot of work for them. This is the testing pedestal that I built for Westrek. I said, listen, why don't we, this is before they bought the pedestals that you're talking about with the, the, um, yeah. Yeah, with the LCs inside, right? I said, give me one of these, other they got a junkyard, you know, an old building and field full of these things just laying in the grass. So I grabbed one, threw it in my truck, brought it home, stripped it down, cleaned it up, painted it, I drilled holes, I mounted the ground fault sensing module, not an LC, installed the circuit board and the audio, I put those little holes are for, and then I put 250 amp connections over here, 150, 125, and 130 amp on the other side. And then I ran the hot neutral outside of the box, just like I did my sensor. And then I uh, ran the ground wire outside the box, just like I did my sensor. Now, the other thing I didn't point out is that when you think you've got a bad ground wire, if you clamp over the ground and, and you get no reading, what I did was I put a bullet connector on it. And this male bullet connector is the boat side. So now you're going to hook an ohms meter up between here and behind the guy's main panel, go directly to his bus bar. 
if the guy's got a, a galvanic isolator, you literally need to, a lot of them have a tag that will tell you the resistance of the galvanic isolator. So you have to know that number before you hook an ohms meter up, you know what I mean, that, that's going through it. So you know that the resistance is correct, is my point. But if you go from here to the bus bar and you get zero, then you know you got a break somewhere. So you're, you know, what I love to do is I like to keep it connected through the guy's short power cord, the connection side of his boat, because you can put this at the boat end too. Like literally, I'll do that on large, like these 124 triple decker helicopter pad boats. I'll put this at the boat end, you know what I mean? Because it's closer to here, I can get to it faster. So literally, if I get a break, Normally, it's a galvanic isolator. They get nailed by lightning strips, surge electricity, whatever it is. They're so simple to bypass. You can just take the jumper cables and just go clip, just bypass, and that just solves the problem. Normally, you get your ground back. And then, all right, now we're going to do this. We're going to connect this. this I mean, as tight as I can. Now we're going to test it again. Now we're going to clamp here. Okay, now we got a leading in the ground line. Now we can continue working on the boat. The boat is safe to, to, to handle. Okay? So what I did with the testing pedestal was same thing, and that ground wire is detachable. Literally, you can disconnect it, so you can run an ohms meter if you want. You know, sometimes the short power cords are so long, you can just grab the cord and walk down the dock on, on the guy's boat, you know, and just do this with a short ohms meter, you know. But a lot of times the short power cord is under the dock, it's wrapped around things, so it's just better off to have, you know, a 50-foot wire and even two alligator clips. And go from here through the guy's cord, through his connection, through his galvanic isolator, all the way to the back of the scale, directly to his ground. Line. You know, again, because this thing is, it's going to tell you, you're looking for extensions under the dock, vessel connections, galvanic isolators, you know, all the way up behind the main panel with an ohms meter is what you want to do. Um, I also put a sticker on the side, like you'll see on the bottom of the, the sensor, I put a QR a reference code, so you just snap it with your smartphone, it goes directly <coughs> to my website, tells you exactly what to do and how to do it. <coughs> um, this is the pedestal when it's done, and like I say, it's got all the different connections, so any boat can pull up to it. They just built a brand new field dock. They're running a brand spanking new 100 amp service to the field dock devoted to this pedestal. This pedestal has not been installed yet. It's getting done this spring. Um, the best part about that is that it's got a clean ground system. It's not tied in with, you know, it's not at the end of some dock that has 100 other boats tied in. You know what I mean? It's just, it's got its own 100 amp service with its own clean ground system. So, uh, like I was saying before, when you clamp me to the hot neutrals, you get a reading, and you clamp me to the ground wire, they should cancel each other out. But sometimes the number will be off just a little bit. Well, that's because you've got that GC, you've got garbage current. You've got a little bit of residual in your ground wire. So maybe you might get a small different reading when you clamp the ground. It might not be exact, like, like just now, when I had 0 0.130 and then I had 0 0.130, that's because there's no garbage in the ground system. Right, but every once in a while, you'll find when you when you're testing boats, you'll get a little bit of difference in the ground and the hot neutrals. Well, that's because there's residual in the ground system. You know, talking about clamp metering the ground wire only. It means everything. Gives you a reading. You're good to go. You can keep moving. Okay, that, this is what we're talking about. These are the new pedestals that have these international, geez, if I could expand it, I didn't read it, I forget the name of it, but international intelligence something, right? So, I, you know, they called me first and said, listen, we installed these new pedestals, we had these guys plug in, uh, the boats are getting turned off, we've got people pissed off, they're fucking coming after us, they're angry, please go try to figure out what's going on. So what I did was I, you know, first thing I did was the RF test just to see, and it shut the boat off. So I, I knew I could fix that with an RF bag. Then I opened up the lid, and I found inside that there's dip switches. If you look at the left picture, top left corner, 
there's dip switches right there and it allows you to set the, the, the threshold anywhere from five to 25 million. So I just went ahead and did all six pedestals at all four marinas. I went to all of them and just set them at 25 to get rid of the nuisance tripping um, and, put the, and, and install the RF bags to get rid of the RF problem in case somebody had strong enough radar, uh, VHF antenna close enough, you know, anything in the air can set these things off. Um, you can see in the bottom right, I brought a rheostat with me. I created a ground. I wanted to know that the threshold of when it was clicking off. In fact, that when I selected the 25 milliamp dip switch setting, I wanted to know for a fact that it actually shut off or activated at 25 milliamps. So that's what I did. I went ahead and I brought a rheostat with me, you know, to drive, to, to create a ground fault. And I clamp metered over the hot neutral wires to one of my sensors, and it literally did exactly that. It activated at 25 million. So I knew the circuitry was working correctly, and it wasn't, you know, it was doing what it was supposed to do. This is the thing that I found out, right? I couldn't believe it. You know, when it, when it activates one, like you've got two short power cords hooked up to this thing, right? You got twin 30 amps. And, and one 30 amp cord has a ground fault in it for whatever reason, these pedestals shut off both of them. So now you lose everything. The whole boat is dead. And why did they do that? To save money. They could have put four black boxes in there instead of just two. Um, I've been doing this promoting for a couple of years. This is me, Lake, Al uh, Lake Lanier uh, Association. I was meeting with marina owners and I, put a, 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 a list and a, a piece of paper and a pen on, on the table. And I said, anybody who wants to sign up, I'll clamp me to your courts for free, you know, just to make sure your boat is safe. Just doing promotions. Um, these are, you know, memberships, Boat US. I've been with Boat US for years. I'm on the referral list. I actually am on their uh, loss prevention program. They hire me to survey boats that are, you know, been with them for 10 years or more. They give me like five assignments at one time. And, National Marine Manufacturing Association because I'm building a sensor. ABYC, I've been with them forever. I've got my technical marine certifications. NFPA, I've been with them forever. Um, you know, I've got all of Holiday, West Trek, um, Singleton Marine Group, Glade Marine. These are all the people that I do a lot of work for. Um, I flew to California to go to San Reno to um, inspect West Trek's marina in California about a month ago. They paid for the trip, so I went. Um, any questions? For an isolation transformer? Well, an isolation transformer doesn't utilize a ground wire, right? It's, it's hardwired to, to, it's literally just a hot and neutral wire and just feeding the boat. And the reason why they do that is in the event that you have a fault on board, it returns to itself because it's its own power source. So what's disconnecting it, connecting it, you won't get any, you don't get any power surge or impact problem when you're checking the LCI. It won't trip those things out. You know, I don't think I ever, the LC device is hardly you can install on hardly anything. You know what I mean? I, I think I found a Bayliner one day that had one on it, and I found a Carver one day that had, I mean, very limited, you know, a C Ray um, that had one on it. Um, I just haven't ran across enough boats that have LC devices to be able to figure out if, they, if an isolation transformer somehow would cause a problem. With an LC, I just haven't gotten that far. The thing that might be happening is some of the isolation transformers would have a step up feature. If you open them up, there's actually a giant contactor in there, and it's a contact that gets carbon on it that the contacts you get a lot of resistance, and it might be more resistance is tripping because your fender voltage is sagging because you're not getting the voltage. I haven't seen it done, but I have a place called Contact Sure. <laughs> yeah, I love isolation transformers. I think they're that's the way to go, but people they just they cost. Yeah, you gotta have the money to buy one. Yeah. Oh yeah, they weigh. They're, they're they're worth their weight in gold. 
you know, what they, they do what they're supposed to do, but they cost a lot of money and not everybody, you know, can afford to do it. And you got a lot of ignorant people out there, you know, the, the, the one thing that I run into is this. I say, okay, Mr. Boat Owner, your boat has got 12.5 amp straight current, right? They're like, well, that can't be. Everything works on board my boat. Everything works. Well, I'm telling you that this boat is hot. It's dangerous. And I'm about to untie you and kick you out in the middle of the lake. I don't want this boat in the marina unless it's fixed. So you go ahead and you spend a half a day. You find a problem. You figure it out. You fix it. And you come back and they, they look at you. Well, what did you fix? Everything's still working. Everything's the same. I go, what I fixed was this. And you're going to cram and try. I got rid of that 12.5 that this meter was telling me. And that's all I can show them for their money. You know what I mean? So there's real no, you know, they're real not, they're, they're, they're still not happy with you. <laughs> it's, not like fix, it's not like fixing the motor that didn't run. You know, now it runs, now they're happy. Yes. So we turn on appliance if there's something inside the boat. Now we're on the trip, right? <coughs> It'll so activate them. If you're getting something turned on that's causing the problem. Yeah, so that's the idea of process of elimination. When I hit a breaker and it goes beep, beep, okay, we found it. I mean, thank God there's no neutral ground connection on board this boat. It's actually wired correctly. And we simply have a faulty appliance. It's just a hot water heater. Thank you. You know what I mean? That's, 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 that's getting lucky. Normally, it's a neutral ground connection. 99.9% .9 of the time, the boat's not wired correctly, that it's an appliance that's been replaced, uh, that they bought from Home Depot or Best Buy. Um, you get lucky once in a great while um, when you're just going through the process of elimination, you hit that one breaker that activates the sensor, you know, and you get lucky. Okay, you know, it's got to be the hot water heater. Like I showed in the picture, that, that, that boat was, that 16 amps was that one hot water heater. But, but the reason why I got readings in both boats was because the neutrals are tied together. Yeah, it was a Home Depot hot water heater. Or yeah, yeah, it was a it was a house. Home. No, it wasn't a marine heater <coughs> that had a stainless steel reservoir in the center. And that's what the houseboat companies get away with. Like, I don't know what the deal they do with the Coast Guard or NYC, but literally when they build the houseboats, you know, the, the engine room bulkhead is completely sealed. So in the event that you tear your drive off the back of the boat and you're taking on a thousand gallons of water, it doesn't go forward. It doesn't sink the boat. So with that in mind, and the fuel tanks are in the engine room, no fuel vapors can make it up forward. So now they're allowed to install automotive battery chargers, household hot water heaters, household air conditioners, things that make spark all day long. It doesn't matter because it's completely separated from the engine room. That's how houseboats get away with that. <coughs> um, one other thing. So let's just say this, ha this happened to me. I was in Stewart, Florida, hanging out with my father. My father lives in Hope Sound. And I was promoting my sensor. And a broker said to me, man, I've got this 110-foot Broward at this marina, I want you to test it with your straight current sensor. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna be there all day long. Oh my God, oh my God, that's a big boat, you know? So I do it anyway, I show up on time and I plug in my sensor and I show them, you know, I hit the test button, you know, I said, you know, that's the noise it's gonna make if, you know, if we activate something. I mean, this thing's got like a whole dive equipment area in the tram, I mean, it's got compressor, the boat is just off the shelf, right? So I hook the sensor up, and we go through everything on board. I mean, this guy's got computers plugged in and all this stuff, and I'm waiting for the alarm to go off, and the alarm never goes off. So I'm thinking, all right, I, put, you know, I forgot to you know, check the button, right? Well, I tested it, it alarmed. It wasn't because the button was shut off. This boat is actually wired correctly. So the guy looks at me and he says, Mike, are you sure your sensor does what it's supposed to do? I mean, come on, man, this is a big boat. We've been through all these <laughs> components, whatever. I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, how can I prove to this guy that this sensor works? So this is what I did. How did I do this? This is how I did. I said, well, I'll be right back. I jumped in my car and I drove to the, if I can find the connection here. Um, I 
jumped in my car, I drove to the nearest hardware store. And I bought a replaceable three-prong plug. And what I did was I wired the neutral prong to the ground prong. Like literally, I can walk up at this outlet right here, right? I can plug it in and nothing happens, right? It doesn't blow a break, it doesn't do anything, right? All I've done is create a neutral ground prong. So I come back, I build this little gadget in my truck and I come walk up to the boat and I hand it to the guy, I said, I said, any outlet on board this boat, I don't care, galley, cabin, whatever, just plug it in. He walks right into the galley and he plugs it in. That wasn't supposed to happen. That wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> Hold on is there now. I did this before I left the house yesterday. Come on. Well, I can tell you that when Yeah, maybe when I yanked on it too hard. I mean another one. I'm gonna hold back and do these over here. Um, you know, I think I have one. Oops, something going on here. But I can tell you, I do it all the time. I plug in, I just take a three a three prompt connection, I create a neutral ground connection, and it sets this alarm off. Unless, of course, the ground is no good in the wall. Like literally, I'm just saying that if there's no ground connected to that outlet, then this won't happen. Plug your short vest. I will. <laughs> I got so many connections going on. What about the extension board? Is that good? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I can test that too, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, we, we <laughs> But it, it, it works. I, try, I do it all the time. I go, you know, I pull out that little three prime, I pick an outlet, I plug it in, and beep, 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 and it sets it right off. So I mean, it's good. No, no. Okay, so disconnect this. I'm gonna make sure this one's okay, so that works. Just have so many dang connections. Bingo. 
it was because of the connections. It's that 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 sensor is a good sensor. But um, so reset, right? So like I said, I'm on board the boat. The boat. The guy's like, "Are you sure the thing actually works?" So I go and I came up with this. I just you know just said to myself, "Hey, just create a, a neutral ground connection," and that's what it does. So. What about a neutral ground connection at the generator? Well, all power sources should have a neutral ground connection, including battery chargers, inverter systems. Um, I can tell you that for whatever reason, um, I can test boats with generators that do have um, you know, neutral ground connections, obviously, internally. And the sensor doesn't pick that up as a short. Now, how is that? I'd like to get with the generator guy to figure it out. Excuse me? Well, yeah, well, there you go, right? Get it? Well, if the, tra if the transfer is, a, if it's a dual um, throw switch, meaning it controls the neutral and the hot, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I get it. Yeah, that makes sense. That was a good question. Neutral always goes back to the power source. Well, yeah, anything that is a power source should have a neutral ground connection. Just kind of. Okay, keep. Oh, we're done. We're done. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next speaker, Kendra Storm.